everyone. Thank you for clicking into my channel. Here, I will try to guide you all to get the maximum marks in every maths exam question. Yeah, especially the STVM maths D paper. Okay, today we are here to talk about the derivative of logarithmic functions. To be able to derive logarithmic functions, we will first need to know about logarithmic properties. We have to understand the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. I will talk about that later when we go into the questions. A function in the form of log ax with a as a positive constant and x bigger than 0, it is called a logarithmic function. When deriving a logarithmic function, most of the time we will talk about natural logarithmic function. I will call it ln x. When we derive ln x, we will get something like 1 over x. When we have another function in our logarithmic function, for example, ln fx, it will transform into 1 over fx and we will derive fx, the function given, and write it at the side. Basically, this is the formula that we are going to use inside our derivative today. Let's check out some examples. Examples here consist from 2 to 4 marks. So you're going to see 2 to 4 marks question inside the exam for differentiation of logarithmic function. Now, for this question, it is given to you y is equal to ln 1 plus x squared. We are going to apply the formula. What we do is, we will copy down 1 over 1 plus x squared. And then, we are going to differentiate whatever we have inside the function. Once we differentiate it, we will put it into the bracket beside the 1 over 1 plus x squared. And we simplify it. During exam, there is no need for you to write d over dx and the function because marks will be given when you derive and when you simplify. So for this question, because it is just a simple uh, 2x and put them together, you will be wondering why I did not straight away jump here. But actually, during exam the time, you might have more things to simplify. So it is best to do it step by step. For this second question, it is given y equals to ln 1 plus x cubed and this whole thing has a power of 4. For question like this, we will first start with the power rule. What will happen is, whatever in the power will come to the front. So, what will happen here is, 4 is going to go to the front and we have our ln 1 plus x cubed there. When we derive this, we are going to apply what we learned in question number 1. So, we will copy 1 over 1 plus x cubed and differentiate 1 plus x cubed at the side. Differentiating 1 plus x cubed we will get 3x squared. This answer will be simplified into 12x squared over 1 plus x cubed. Now, there is no need to write this step. So, our marks will be 
there and here one more mark for the answer so let's check out the next question in question number three they give you square root of x squared minus one in previous question we already learned that square root is actually power of 1 over 2 so we can move it with the power rule and bring it to the front now we can differentiate our ln x squared minus 1 again this step there is no need to do during the exam we can straight away write 1 over x squared minus 1 and differentiate x squared minus 1 and it will end up like this once we get it done we can simplify this and write it down so our marks will be there and in the last answer In this question number four, we first need to apply the product rule inside the question. So, x plus 1 squared and 2x plus 3 cubed can be separated into this format. After that, we are going to apply the power rule. So, the index is going to go to the front. Now we can differentiate our function. Once we differentiate this, it is going to transform to 2 over x plus 1 and 2 over 2x plus 3 using what we learned in question 1 until question number 3. One mark will be given here when you apply the properties but you have not gained the three marks yet so we need to continue by simplifying this all this to simplify that we will first need to combine the fraction once we combine it, we need to simplify it until we get the simplest form. Okay, then only we will get the final one mark. In question number five, I will start by changing the square root into power of one over two. Then I'm going to use the power rule and transform this into 1 over 2 multiplied by ln 1 minus x over 1 plus x. Next is, I'm going to apply the quotient rule. So, this will transform into 1 over 2 multiplied with ln 1 minus x minus ln 1 plus x using the quotient rule. Once that's done, I can now differentiate the function. During exam, this you do not need to write because the marks is here, okay, where you apply the properties. I'm just showing you so that you can understand after this step, you can differentiate already. Differentiating this will get negative 1 over 1 minus x minus 1 over 1 plus x. Now you need to simplify to this set of fractions to get into your answer so i'm going to multiply expand 
and simplify again until I get this final answer. Now you may ask me why in the previous question I did not multiply the brackets whereas in here I multiply it. So actually whether you want to multiply it or not it depends on whether after you multiply the brackets in the denominator will the equation get bigger or get simpler so you can adjust it yourself so once you differentiate the marks will be here when you apply the differentiation technique and there when you simplify and again there when you get the final answer okay so this marks because the equation is bigger so you get more marks for this question When we apply the fraction together, when we combine them, and we simplify it. For this case, I'm not going to uh, multiply the denominator because that is all I need to do for to get my full marks. For question number seven, you cannot separate x and square root x squared minus 1. So, you need to apply the differentiation straight away. So, this will transform into 1 over x plus square root of x squared minus 1. Then only we can differentiate whatever given inside this function. Now, to do this, I'm going to get differentiating of x, I will get 1. And I'm going to differentiate composite function here. So the index is going to the front and copy whatever inside the bracket. Index minus 1, I get negative 1 over 2. And differentiate whatever inside the bracket to get 2x. So differentiating x squared minus 1, I get 2x. This part here is by using differentiation of composite functions. So I will link uh, the video for differentiation of composite function somewhere on the top here. Or I will put it in the description box below. So Check it out if you have not seen that video. Okay, I need to simplify this. Okay, so now I have this whole set of uh, function written in a proper format. So the index is supposed to be at the bottom. This 2 and 2x, the 2 can be simplified away. One mark. When you differentiate the lawn, one more mark when you get the differentiation of composite function, 
and your final marks is when you can simplify the composite function and write it in proper format. We still have one more marks missing. So I'm going to combine the fraction and once I combine it, I will notice that x plus square root of x squared minus 1 and square root of x squared minus 1 plus x, they are the same. So I can simplify both of them, clear it away and my final answer will only be 1 over square root of x squared minus 1. That's where my one mark comes in. Okay, that's about it. Subscribe if you want to learn about derivative of exponential function and give me a like if you find that this video is useful for you and share it with your friends. That's all from me today. Goodbye.